So we're going to use this time to wrap up our discussion on uncollectible accounts and run it into a, a very quick calculation called net accounts receivable. So we're talking about estimating uncollectible accounts. You know, the first question is why do we need to go about estimating? And we really need to do it in order to maintain proper matching. Uh, we got to make sure our expenses are in the same period of the revenue that generated it. And if you don't estimate it, you're not going to get it to the right place. So we got to get another thought in, you know, if accounts receivable is an asset, you know, what do we need to do about that? Well, if we truly believe that not all accounts receivable is going to be collected because there's going to be people like my friend Jed and my friend John and my friend, oh, Mark, we'll call him friend for now, okay, uh, then... You know, these individuals, not not everyone is going to pay you. We, we, we know that in life. So those accounts receivable don't really have value for a, a business. We have to find a way to decrease the value, and we're going to decrease the value of accounts receivable with a contra asset, and that contra asset is called allowance for uncollectible accounts. So why don't we just, you know, go an easier route, estimate the amount of uncollectible accounts, and then subtract it from the amount of sales and accounts receivable, you know, we're not going to collect it. It's not a sale or an asset. But there's a couple problems with that. First of all, you know, we made the sale. We had earned the sale. We did the sale in good faith. You know, it's kind of how you operate in business. You need to operate in good faith. Otherwise, you're really going to be a skeptical individual. And, and so we need to find a way, another way to go about our accounting of the information here. So, in other words, we're going to keep our uncollectible accounts information separate from just the accounts receivable accounts. So that way we can evaluate our credit policies and see if there's something we can change uh, to impact our business positively. So we get into collecting or calculating your uncollectibles. There's two main methods. There's the net sales method and the, and the aging of accounts receivable. Both do the same thing in terms of calculating the adjustment, making your expense, uncollectible accounts expense go up, and your asset using the contra asset go down. Okay, uh, the aging of accounts receivable. Uh, one thing you need to do here is you need to consider the remaining balance from the prior year when calculating the adjustment for the current year. That does make it a little bit more challenging. I have another video that goes over an example using the aging of accounts receivable. The amount of the adjustment will depend upon a few things. First of all, the current year's calculation, uh, the accuracy of the prior year's calculation, and let's be honest, you're never correct on this estimate. You're always going to be a little bit off, and that's okay. As long as you're close, you're good. Because over the course of two years, you must be right. So the adjustment needed in the current year is going to be your debit to uncollectible accounts expense, your credit to uncollectible, the allowance for uncollectible accounts, which is that contra account. And then when you finally get around to writing off that customer, there you go. There's your debit for uncollectible accounts. And then your credit to accounts receivable. Really, you're just decreasing a contra asset and decreasing an asset, so you're not impacting your net income or your assets when you write off that customer using the allowance method. So since we now know which customer won't pay us, we can get them off the books. Maybe they tell us. Maybe we unfortunately find out via an obituary. Maybe there's a declaration of bankruptcy. Like there's some reasons why you find out an individual won't pay you. Uh, at that point, you can write them off. That's part of your estimate. That was part of the estimate from before. Uh, and just a quick review, if we decrease the asset, the contra asset, what is the impact? Absolutely none on our income statement or our balance sheet. Look at the balance sheet specifically and, and the net accounts receivable. So when we're talking about our net accounts receivable, we think about, well, how, does, how do these uncollectibles really impact the annual balance sheet? And I'll give you an example here in a second. Obviously, it's through accounts receivable. And more specifically, it's going to be a little calculation called net account receivable, which is account receivable, the asset, minus the allowance for uncollectible accounts, the contra to account receivable. That's the calculation. That's it. It's very simple. So here's a quick example. You can see this is actually Microsoft. Uh, this is their public information. So this is legit right here. Uh, 630.19, you can see their net receivables are 29,524. Now those numbers are already in thousands, so technically it's 29,524,000 in net receivable that they are owed. If you take it to their detailed annual report, this is what Microsoft releases to their shareholders, uh, you can dive in 100 pages, eventually you find the balance sheet, again in millions, and you can see there's your 29,524 billion. Okay? 
but there's an added piece on Microsoft's annual report that helps to paint this picture a little bit better. You can see it's net of the allowance for, they call it doubtful accounts, this is Amazon collectible accounts, of 411 technically million dollars, okay? So they've already taken that amount out of their accounts receivable. So to quickly show you, this is the background calculation that Microsoft is doing. The gross accounts receivable is really 29,935 million. Subtracting out the allowance for uncollectible or doubtful, whatever you want to call it, of 411 million leaves you that net accounts receivable that you show on your balance sheet of 29,524 million. I think they're doing okay because on top of all that information of being owed $29 billion, they still have in cash $11 billion. So they'll find a way.